my name is Dor Sethi. Uh, I will tell you a little bit today about coral chimerism and the way to harness it into reef restoration. Um, so what is coral chimerism? Chimerism is a phenomenon where an organism contains cells, tissue, or organs that derive from two different individuals, but from the same species, okay, like organ transplantation, for example. Um, it is documented in numerous taxonomical groups, as plants, amoeboids, humans, mammals, and marine colonial invertebrates. In corals, chimerism is the um, outcome of aggregated settlement. When a planola settle alone, it creates a genetic homogeneous colony, a regular colony. But when it settles in aggregation, two things can happen. The first thing is they can fuse each other, and then I have a chimera. When I have two partners, it's big chimera. When I have more than two partners, it's a multi chimera. The other thing that can happen, it's no fusion, it's rejection. And then I have a be rejected colonies, entities, which are different colonies, or multi rejected. <coughs> Um, chimerism is documented in at least 18 coral species and fossils, and raising the question, what is the benefits of coral chimerism? So here I will talk a little bit about um, size increment and survivorship under field condition from, for a long time. So I worked on the model animal Stylophora pistillata, pistillata, it's a Red Sea species, one of the most common branching, brooding, and since fusion can occur only in the first few months upon settlement, I collected larvae and created the chimeras. Then at the age of five to seven months, I moved them into our mid-water floating nursery in the sea. And then I, each few weeks, I photographed them from above to measure aerial size and from the side to measure height. And with these two measurements, I created another measurement index, which is a, a rock cell ecological volume. So about the results. Uh, the x-axis are the age in month, the y is the log size, and we found a significant difference in aerial size and ecological volume between chimeras and reject, sorry, chimeras and the rejected entities were bigger in the beginning than the regular colonies. This difference was not existed after a year and a half, which were 18 months, um, and regarding the height, there was no difference at all. And this is a calf and mare survival analysis. The x-axis is time in the nursery in days. And the blue and the purple lines are the chimeras being multi, and they had around 75% survival rate. And that was compared to the rejected entities in the control, which are the regular in, uh, colonies, uh, which had around 50%. And together with our collaborators from France, we also compared the gene expression pattern between the chimeras and the regular colonies and we found a difference, a difference in gene expression between the chimeras and the non-chimeras, um, which this difference was much more smaller, was minor when we put them under stress. Uh, apparently, the chimeras front-loaded front genes that um, help them face environmental change. So uh, to summarize everything, by harnessing chimerism into the active reef restoration, chimerism can, can serve as knock arc preserving genotype that otherwise will not survive. Um, we can increase, it is increasing genotypic diversity, genetic diversity, and by that phenotypic diversity, and give the colony and the population uh, more physiological qualities to uh, and, uh, um, environmental change. They are getting bigger faster and have higher survivability when they are young, which is an important feature when you farm corals in nurseries, and by that, and we can increase the amount of genotypes per unit of area. Uh, it's economical and easy uh, method to perform, and it gives the reef uh, the push it needs for to recover by itself. So I did an um, example how you can harness chimerism, which is more suitable to this session, but there are more ways. So we can create choose genotypes that um, we know they are a bit more resistant, let's say, to eat, and the other one resistant to certain disease, we can fuse them, create a chimera, grow them, fragment them, make lots of uh, colonies, grow them again in, in uh, nurseries, in huge numbers, and transplanting them into a degraded reef. And thank you everyone to that helped me, my PIs, Guti Rinkevich, which is not here, and Professor Nadav Shashar that is here, and everyone. Um, that's it.
questions. Yes. Yeah. Uh, from the same this from the same maternal colonies, but you can do it from different. No, I collected larvae from the field. Okay, so they are brooders. I know with the mother, I have no idea with the father. Okay, but they fuse even if they are not siblings. Okay. So I have a slide for that. You have two ways to do it. You can do it what the way you said it, which I call it the natural aggregation, okay? And the second way is to do it by, I call it induced aggregation. I'm taking the primary polyps like this and glue them. They have to be really young. And like that, you can do a selective, okay? With that, it's less selective. Yeah, in Salopra Fistilata, it's four months. Yeah, so when you just do the No, it's happened. Okay, there is, uh, when they're siblings, it's uh, around six, when I let them fuse alone, okay, it's around 60%. When I make it manually, when they're sibling, it's 40%. The natural aggregation, when they're not sibling, it's around 25%. Fusing. So the more genotypes you will have within an aggregation, yeah, do the math. <laughs> but it's about Salofra fistellata. I didn't examine it on um, others. I have a few proper ones with like a f 20 genotypes, which are fused, completely fused. The growth rate, it's not the growth rate, that's what the size. Okay, so they're bigger in the beginning because it's two now instead of one. Okay, so it's very beneficial. It's probably one of the reasons, it's not the only reason, it's given higher survivability because there was someone who gave a lecture about it, about the size. Okay, the bigger they are, and it's about grazing, for example. Okay, if they get the bite, they will not die, they still survive. So the bigger they are, more survive, but they have different gene expression as well. <coughs> 